My first video game I ever played was Super Mario Brothers on the NES. It was the combo cartridge with Duck Hunt and Track and Field. I would not say I was hooked, and I was somewhere between the ages of 3 and 4, and do not remember much from that point in my life. I casually enjoyed the games on the NES, but let's face it, for a kid as young as I was, they were very hard. Regardless, Mario stuck with me. I played most of his games as the years passed, until the Wii U. At the time, I could not afford one, and had to pass until I could. So I missed out on the Wii U library, including Super Mario 3D World. I eventually did buy a Wii U, after the Switch was out. I wanted to play some of the games I missed out on, and some that I wish I did. At the time, there were whispers of ports coming to the Switch, but hindsight is 2020. One of the titles I bought was Super Mario 3D World. This escaped my attention, as new games kept me distracted, and I left it for the summertime drought video games typically go through. When Nintendo announced all the releases for Mario's 35th anniversary, and I watched the trailer for Bowser's Fury, that's when I knew I had to play the game. The dark and brooding giant Bowser looked amazing. Then the bell rang, and Mario appears as an enormous glowing Super Saiyan cat. The game just turned into a kaiju fight. Then the game came out. I did not play Bowser's Fury at first. I decided to play 3D World initially. I might do a version versus version at some point, but I wanted to focus on Bowser's Fury due to the lasting impact the game left on me. The adventure starts out with Mario following a trail of familiar looking sludge, which leads to a very familiar looking M on the ground. Mario is then transported above a landscape with multiple giant footprints in the ground and lands on his head. This is where I take control of Mario. After taking in my surroundings, I head for a wrecked ship off in the distance. The rain is pouring down. Lightning is flashing off in the distance, accompanied by the booming thunder. And on the horizon, there's a dark silhouette of a landscape covered in spikes. When I cross the deck of the wrecked ship, there's a flash of lightning illuminating the lake. But that's not what draws my attention. In the middle of the lake is Bowser, and his size matches those of the footprints from the cutscene. He is black from head to toe, except for his stomach, the tips of his spikes on his back, mane on his head, and his eyes all glow with a hot fury, while a steady stream of flame emanates from his mouth. This is one of two scenes that helps set the tone for the game when fighting Bowser. This is where some of the mechanics are introduced into the game. It is to show what happens when Bowser appears, what his attacks are, how to avoid them, how to break fury blocks, and lastly, the game's collectibles, the cat shines, and the best collectibles in a Mario game ever. For the most part, Bowser's Fury uses the same mechanics for movement as 3D World, but the camera tracks Mario like it does in Mario Sunshine and Odyssey. After Bowser withdraws due to not being able to withstand the power of the cat shine, Mario sees Bowser Jr. in a panic and approaches. I'm sure that Bowser Jr. is responsible for bringing Mario to Lake Lapcat because he asked Mario to help his dad and the giant paintbrush he is holding. This is the premise for Bowser's Fury. Afterwards, he joins Mario as a companion. There are four options for Bowser Jr. in terms of his role in the game. One is co-op, which I haven't had the chance to try. The other three are basically difficulty settings. This ranges to helping a lot, helping a little, or not at all. I played through the whole thing twice and did help a little and help a lot. Essentially, help a lot is easy mode with Bowser Jr. going nuts, attacking every enemy and gathering every coin. While help a little is just what it says, and he attacks less often. I'm sure it's safe to assume not at all means he does not attack. He also carries five of the six power-ups brought over from 3D World to Bowser's Fury. The power-ups that were brought over are the Super Bell, or Cat Suit, Super Mushroom, Boomerang Flower, Fire Flower, Super Leaf, and the Lucky Bell, a different version of the Cat Suit. To be honest, I used the Cat Suit as much as possible, and did not use much of Mario's special moves, and it feels like the game was primarily designed around the Cat Suit. At this point, the rest of the lake is covered in a black sludge that'll hurt Mario if he touches it. It is similar to Bowser Jr.'s Sludge from Mario Sunshine. So Bowser's Fury is a collectathon with 12 lighthouses, 
with five cat shines per lighthouse and 34 scattered around the lake lap cat and five others that I'll cover later for a total of 100 cat shines. There is a sort of time mechanic I will cover as well, but I need to go over a few things first. As you approach the nearest part of the lake not covered in the black sludge, Scamper Shores, a line of text will appear on the screen to hint at what you need to do to get the cat shine. The text is the Shine's mission slash quest title. Similar to previous Mario games like Mario 64, Sunshine, and Odyssey. The difference is that there's no hub world or map. I'll explain a bit later. I know I keep saying that, but there is a reason for it. I noticed something peculiar about all the minions, other creatures, and even the lighthouses. They all have cat ears. Even the seagulls and Plessy will get them later. The only thing that does not have cat ears are the giant rabbits you chase down for shines. The game is using a cat theme after all, and that makes it the best Mario venture of all time. Hang on, there's a giant calico cat, and she's crying. Why are you crying? You lost your kitten? I will drop everything and find your kitten. Here you go. Don't be sad now. There are two other lighthouses nearby. A statue that has a gold body and a head in the shape of a super bell, but covered in black sludge. And an indicator that shows that five shines are needed. So this is how the lighthouses work. After getting a shine, you go to a different lighthouse and complete the task needed to get the shine. Each lighthouse has three shines that need to be done in order. One that requires you to collect five cat tokens that I usually collect when I'm getting the first shine, and one that is behind or under fury blocks that Bowser needs to destroy. Here's where the time element is introduced. Bowser makes another appearance in one of the best cutscenes in a Mario game ever. Just watch and tell me that was not awesome. How can you tell when Bowser will make another appearance? Just keep an eye out on the center of the lake and you can see him rise out of the center. There are a few ways to get rid of Bowser. You already saw one at the beginning of the game by getting a cat shine. And the other option is just to wait him out by hiding or avoiding his attacks. A third option, if it's available, is to fight him. If you gather enough shines, the black sludge covering the Giga Bell will be gone, and the next time Bowser shows up, the bell will let out a deep ring to beckon you to come and grab it. When you do, Mario grows in size like Ultraman, but with a new cat suit that has a thick mane and glows with a yellow aura to contrast that of Bowser's dark visage. You become Super Saiyan Cat Mario in a kaiju fight with his arch nemesis. The fight is short, but sweet. Also, if you grabbed its shine while Bowser is after Mario, it will decrease his health, making the fight easier. When you beat Bowser, more of the sludge will vanish, and more of the lake will become accessible, with more lighthouses plus a second Giga Bell. I think this is a good point to talk about Plessy. If you have not played 3D World, Plessy is a large, aquatic, orange, Yoshi-like rideable character. In 3D World, Plessy's role is rather small, only being in the game for a few stages, and all of them are rather narrow and allow you to go in one direction, along with the controls being a bit floaty. Because Bowser's Fury takes place on a lake, you can let loose with Plessy, speeding across the lake, bowling through Bowser's minions, felling trees, hitting ramps, and just being fun to ride. Wait, another calico cat lost her kittens? Wait, is that the same cat? Looks like the same cat. Did you lose the same kitten with two additional kittens? So, pro tip, when approaching the kittens, have a cat suit on.
One thing I need to mention is that the cats on the island will go from extremely nice to crazy in a heartbeat when Bowser shows up. So basically, like real cats. Now both the Giga Bells are covered in the sludge, again, requiring more shines to unlock. Just like before, you gather the shines needed to remove the sludge. After you gather the needed shines and beat Bowser again, the last part of the lake becomes accessible. There's a third encounter with the Calico Cat, but I'm not doing the bit again. Yes, I made it a priority to get those kittens. Once you get to 48 shines, they will no longer cause Bowser to retreat. This is where the pressure is on. Fire is raining down from the sky, black calms are erupting from the ground, and Bowser is relentlessly pursuing Mario, constantly breathing streams of fire at you while you dodge, dip, dive, duck, and dodge his attacks, desperately searching for the last shines needed to cleanse the three gigabells. In all honesty, this is not much of an issue, mainly because there are multiple shines that need Bowser to be present to get them, and in some cases it makes it easier to get a handful of them. After getting the 50th shine, Bowser retreats once more, but the reprieve is short. Only a few seconds later it turns dark and begins to rain again. Once more, the Giga Bell rings out and you battle Bowser. Yet again, this can be kind of anticlimactic, depending on how many shines you grabbed when Bowser was attacking. After thrashing Bowser again, he falls back into the lake and a fountain of black sludge gushes out of his mouth. Bowser Jr. then forlornly flies to where his dad sunk beneath the lake's surface. He is soon surprised, fleeing in a panic as Bowser emerges from the depths of the lake, no longer in a state of extreme fury, but still gigantic. He then traps the three Giga Bells in a spherical shield, and the last fight starts. The encounter starts with Bowser standing in the lake, and all three Giga Bells in the shield he placed them in, floating in front of his stomach. Plus he is there and willing to give Mario a lift, and off you go in hot pursuit of Bowser. You race around the lake as Bowser launches large pointed slabs at you and breathes jets of flame. He will conveniently jump to the opposite side of a ramp as he attacks, and when you get close, he will jump to another ramp, renewing his attacks. At some point, he stops to gloat, and that's when you strike, by slamming into the sphere, holding the Giga Bells, smashing them into Bowser. From here, it's rinse and repeat. After the third strike, the Giga Bells are released, both Mario and Plessy are turned into giant cat versions, and send Bowser flying. A cutscene plays and the credits roll, but the game's not done yet. There's still 50 other shines to get. When you go back to Lake Lapcat, the game continues as before, with Bowser appearing after some time has gone by. But there are some small changes. The rest of the cat shines are now available. Toadette makes an appearance and has a camp set up with, I guess, a form of speech bubble above her head, indicating that other toads are missing. Lastly, Plessy is in her cat form, which has a bonus. You can now put kittens on her back. So if you have not rescued all those calico kittens, it just got a bit easier. There is one shine I want to point out, and the five I mentioned earlier. So there is a map of the lake that looks like it's painted on canvas. It's supposed to be made by Bowser Jr., but it's a nice touch. It shows where you can find shines around Lake Lapcat, and allows you to warp to lighthouses, but the area is so small I never bothered. There is one shine that keeps changing position when you open and close the map, and for whatever reason, I never looked up. It's on a moving island in the air. It stops at the top of Mount Magmeow, on the right ear, when you look in the same direction as the face on the mountain. The last five shines are tied to Bowser making his appearance. Every time he makes an appearance, a golden island will descend from the sky and land somewhere on Lake Lapcat. Here, you have to rush to the island and find a way to get on it before Bowser leaves. With all the cat shines collected, there's another battle with Bowser. Just like before, he retreats when you grab the last shine, and only a few seconds later, it starts to rain again. There is something different this time around. Bowser is so furious by this point, he went from an angry orange to white hot fury. His eyes, 
mane, spikes, and belly all share the same white color. In addition to that, his health bar has increased and is completely full. Pro tip, use his spikes as much as possible, even when he jumps into the air and tries to crush Mario. Just dodge the first attack, and while carrying his spike, walk into him or throw it at him. Do the same thing when he rolls on the edge of his shell. In general, just grab the spikes whenever possible. After draining his health bar, you do the same chase as before with Plessy. Except this time around, you have to hit him a few more times. So what do you get for collecting all 100 cat shines? I actually did not know I would get anything other than the satisfaction of getting all 100. I actually discovered this going in and getting more footage. But the cat suit you get from the Super Bell and the Lucky Bell are now the same suit Mario wears when he grabs the Giga Bell. There is one other thing that unlocks, and that is Bowser Jr. has his own cat appearance. With all that, how does the game play? As usual, Mario has fluid control, and there are no issues with how he handles. The only real issue I had when playing was with the camera, and that was only in a few areas, like Rolling Roller Isle. So what happens is an object gets between Mario and the camera, and the camera, for whatever reason, does not adjust so I can see Mario. This was rare, and mainly happened on my first playthrough, and with the development of skill, it was not that much of a problem later on. In terms of difficulty, it is rather easy, with no real part offering any real challenge. Rolling Roller Isle was the only area that gave me any trouble at all, and on my second playthrough, I had no issues. I don't think this is a bad thing. After all, it was intended for Mario's 35th anniversary and I'm sure the target demographic starts at a low age. Yet again, not an issue. The more people who know who Mario is, the better. If there is one thing that could be improved upon, would be the use of the other power-ups. I barely use any of them outside the Super Bell and Lucky Bell. The cat suit makes the game really easy, and like I said, it feels like it was built around it. The only other power-up I used was the Fire Flower, and that was only for Tricky Tower. The Super Leaf I briefly used in Rolling Roller Isle. I never used the Boomerang outside of trying it out, or if I needed to take a hit and did not want to use any of my cat suits. And I never had to touch the Super Mushroom. In terms of length, it is very short. Even with 100 cat shines, it does not take long to complete the game. It took me about 4 hours to get all the shines on my second playthrough, and that includes me restarting due to my capture software glitching. There's a reason why it was included with Super Mario 3D World, and not just because it shares several mechanics. Overall, the game is extremely fun to play, regardless of how easy and short it was. Yes, the only way to get it is to buy 3D World on the Switch, but it's also an enjoyable game as well. So if you have or have not played 3D World, it's still worth buying for Bowser's Fury. Now, will I curse the game? Or will I give it my blessing? Obviously it gets my blessing. So while in the process of getting more footage of the game, I think I found a glitch and just wanted to share it. Remember that part where you gather 48 shines and Bowser will no longer retreat when you grab a shine? This is where the glitch comes in. If you grab over 48 shines before the third section of the lake is available, that bit of text never happens. And you can keep getting all the shines that are available. You can see that the part of the lake that is only available after beating Bowser with 50 shines is still covered in the black sludge, and my shine count is over 50. I have not tried beating Bowser to see what happens at that point, but I guess the game might initiate the final battle. If you liked the video, please give it a like. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. I have a Twitter, and I stream every Saturday from 8 to 10 p.m. on Twitch, and I'll try to add more streams later. I have been playing Monster Hunter Rise, but we'll probably start playing games I plan to review in the future. Thanks again.